souls. I be in the mercy of people. I be in the mercy. So now what I have to do? See, when when God is not your source, the pastor began to cut up some piece of paper. You know, I'm gonna get some anointing oil when that <laughs> In the church because the people Satan is touching the heart of the people of the giving because remember I show you in Luke chapter 4 he's the manager of your money not the owner mm -hmm. yeah. he manages the because remember Luke chapter 4 he took Jesus unto the mountain he said all this glory been given to me and I can give it to whoever I wanted to because I have the power of attorney right. because they still acting like children mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they still immature they don't know who they are, and they don't even know how to get the money from the bank. Wow. So I'm controlling it because they don't know what to do with it. So I'm managing, so I can give it to whoever worship me. Mm -hmm. So now, you spending more time in being the people of the world that got your money, they're using it, enjoying it, um, spending big houses with it, and you want to be like them. Instead of, See, they should try to be like you. Now, I don't got no time to come up in here and try to play games with you and try to preach and pull my ears and mm, God sing, oh Lord. And then you go, oh, oh. But you don't know how to live. Still broke, still not having. You need to know how to have. You need to know how to walk in the things of God. You need step by step on how to get this here thing when you're in trouble. When you're in trouble, instead of calling pastor, let me sleep and say, you know what, you show me how to do it. Let them live. You know, you got power. Come on, I know most people don't want to tell you that, but you got power. Because the Bible said when the Holy Ghost should come upon you, you should have what? Power. power. And what is power? Dunamis. Ability. Huh? You got ability. Know how. Come on. Praise the Lord. I want a church full of people that got so much power. I just come in and say, what's up, y'all? You doing? Praise the Lord. Anybody, you know, get the deacon to lay hands. He got no power for all of us up in here. Um, Amen. Get, get this person to lay hands. Because, we, because now in the church, we want one person to have the power is the pastor. But we got to teach the people, all of y'all got the power. Yes, you got the Holy Ghost in you. You got the power of God moving in you. You got that thing on you. And you need to activate it. You need to move it. You need to go to the place that God wants you to be. Can somebody say amen? amen. Somebody say, hurry up and tell me how I can get rich. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, and like, now look at this, verse 8, I'm going to stop here. And God is able to make all what? Grace. You see that, right? He said he's able to make what? Grace. All grace, all anointing, all, all, all anointing to come upon towards you that you always what? Heaven. Okay? You know you know what that word heaven is past participle of have. Yes. You always gonna have in the past and the present and the future. You always you supposed to always have. There's no time you supposed to see I need to tell you that so you can hear me. So you can have faith on it. You can always have. I told God I don't want to be a weak. I don't have. Even if I have two dollars there, I have. Amen. I got for I have. Huh? That you always have an all sufficiency. You should always have to all sufficiency. You know what that means? You have more than enough that you can have to bless other people. Amen. Yes. Why should these guys, I'm sorry to say, but you see these guys, these rappers, and all these people going to the club and going to the stripper bars, and they got tons of plastic money like this carrying it and making it rain. Amen. <laughs> Can I talk about it? Amen. They, I mean, they got tons of it. I, I mean, if you see, they, 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 they don't even take a stack out like this. They take a... Amen. <laughs> They got tons like like this stacks. I mean, 
money. I seen mm -hmm. plastic bags full of money, fifty thousand dollars in dollars, and they like that. It should be a shame of y'all saying that's my money. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Okay, can I tell you the story of the three little bears? <laughs> no, because you guys say that's my house, that's my money, that's my stuff. Who's sleeping in my bed? Who's eating my porridge? See, the gospel, the prosperity of, 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 I'm talking about is not just for you. It's for us, meaning the needs of mankind. It's not, it's for us to go down there when somebody don't have nothing uh, and begin to meet their needs and make sure they're okay. Build houses, build things for them, begin to help them, get some airplanes, bring some money down to these people that's hurting, that's broken. That's what Jesus wants us to do. We want Jesus you see, we want God to do it, but God said, I'm waiting for you yes. to believe me so I can send you. Yes. Yes. A lot of people say this. They pray just like this, right? Jesus, go down to the hospital and go heal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And so and so died because you wouldn't go up there and go lay hands on him. <laughs> Jesus will go as far as you go. Jesus will heal as far as you go and heal. Because you know why? Because we've been teaching a wrong sense of religion. Wrong sense of religion. Jesus, you go over there. You touch so and so sister's heart. And you know why? When somebody's broke and they need to pay their rent, oh, you want to go go pray for them. They don't need prayer. They need some money. They need money. I don't need you to come and say, Father, meet the need. In the name of another, you need to be blessed to the point that when God bless you, you come to the point. That's why he told Abraham, I will bless you so you can become a blessing. So now I come in in the name of the Lord Jesus and pay your rent. You're going to get saved. Yes, right? Oh, yes, you will. You ain't lying. You're going to get saved right now. You're going to say, hold up. Jesus sent you here. That's right. Jesus. That's right. He sent you. He'll put God. I, praise the Lord. I've I got to get to know him. Because he, because she is. Let me tell you something. What is the greatest expression of love? Anybody tell me. Giving. 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 Give me scripture. For God so loved the world. Yeah. What did he do? Yeah. If somebody says they love you, they won't give up themselves. You need to check it. The greatest expression of love is giving. And when you give to that man that didn't have nothing, that man's heart will melt. The Flyers is not going to get them right now. Because they got so much issues in this world right now. They got so much issues. And guess what they need? They need someone who's going to meet their needs. And when their needs are being met, first the spiritual, first of all, Jesus talked about if a man is hungry, you got to feed him first before you can save him. You want to save them, but you don't meet their needs. How you gonna minister to me? I don't wanna hear what you gotta preach if I'm hungry. I'm, my belly's going from the front to the back. First meet my knees and then save my soul. Yes. Yes. So now, how is, how is God gonna do it unless he does it through you? God, God told the children of Israel, you know what the purpose is? He said that, that I'm gonna make your nation a priest and kings. 
So why? What do you do? So you can represent me in the earth realm and begin to show them the goodness of the kingdom of God. And God's plan is still the same way today. He's looking for a people that are going to believe him on who he is and what he is so he can send you to make a difference to the nations of the world. You're trying to send God, but God is waiting on you to send you and pour his glory on you and pour his goodness on you so you can go out there and do the same thing. The thing about Adam, he needed to take the things of the kingdom, see the garden of Eden, and begin to turn the garden all over the planet. It's still our job to make a difference in this planet. Yes. It is still our job to go forth and make a difference. And a lot of us are waiting on God to make the difference, but God is waiting on you to go and make the difference. And that's why you got to change your mindset on what it is. You got to change your mindset on heaven and me, my God. You see, you got to change your mindset on what you think this thing here to be. God needs you prepared, ready to change your mind, to change your heart, and be able to receive the fullness of what God wants to give to you. Now, how are you going to have? Grace provides. Grace. Luke, Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 19. Grace provides. Yes. And he came to Luke 4, 16 to 19. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You see that, right? Go on. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to who? The poor. Go on. He has sent me to heal the broken He has sent me to heal who? The broken, the broken heart. Go on. To preach deliverance to uh -huh. the hungers and the recovering of sight to the blind. Uh -huh. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Uh -huh. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay. And you know, after he did that, he sat down. They're looking at him like he was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus just said that. He said, anybody believe? Anybody look at him. <laughs> what he just said. Do, do, do you see that? Nobody was ready to receive that word. And how many people got healed in that church that day? How many people got healed? How many heart, heartbroken people received it? No. They got filled with wrath. They got filled with wrath. They got angry because he said it. So here you are. The word was spoken and the word did not produce anything in these people because of their own belief. Right. A, a group of people full of need, and no need was met because they didn't believe. There was no production, no nothing. And even as I'm sitting here right now, there's people with all kind of needs, and you're going to have to get your heart ready to receive. You're going to have to, to, to really get your heart to receive what I'm saying today, and not let offense or not that anything I say that you may not like keep you from receiving God's word so you can be free. Because the truth is I don't got no power to do anything for you, but the word has every power to, to produce for anything in your life that you need right now. And he said that word into a group of people that had need, and no one's need was met. That's a shame. According to the scripture and the light of it, the gospel has never been preached to the poor. You see that, right? The Pharisees had that word and they didn't preach nothing to the poor. There was a whole bunch of poor people still around. Look at Luke 7, 22. The poor must know. The poor, what? Those who got no money, they need to know that God has blessed them and God wants to give them the best of what God wants them to have. They must know. How can they hear unless a preacher is sent? How are you going to know? Faith come by hearing, hearing by what? The word, the word of God. God. Go on, Luke 7, 22. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. You see that, to the poor the gospel. So he said, go tell John what you hear because it's never been preached before. Uh -huh. That's how you know the kingdom of God is upon you. He, see, cause, because John asked a question, are you the one or we oh, going to wait for another? Are you the one? Well. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? And you know what Jesus said? He didn't say oh, 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 a whole bunch of spiritual things. He said he showed the manifestation of the kingdom. Right. The blind see. The lame walk. The broken hearted I heal. And the gospel that preached to the poor. He said go tell John that. Because it's never been preached before. 
It's never been preached to, the, to somebody that you don't have to be broke. It's never been preached to nobody that says you don't, it's not about your degree. And I'm not saying to somebody, if you want to get eight degrees, go get them. But I'm saying to you that regardless if you don't have them or not, God's power can still bless you and heal you and still deliver you. Amen. 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 You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not limited to your culture or background or where you came from or your past. Nothing limits you. Thank you. Nothing. I don't care if you've been in drugs, if you've been in alcohol, if you've been messed up. When the word of God comes in, you can change your entire life and you can become somebody different than you've ever been in your life. It don't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what your parents say. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you don't want to change because you don't know how to change. That's right. That's but God can do it. The power of his word can change your entire being, your entire life. God's will is for his people to prosper. Deuteronomy 15, 1 and 4. Let's read that. Deuteronomy 15. 1 and 4? Yes. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of release. Every creditor that liveth forth unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or his brother, because it is called the Lord's release. Or before him thou mayest exact it again, but that which is thine with thy brother thou shalt shall release. Save when there, is, there shall be no poor among you. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for the inheritance to possess it. Now, God now, even for us as servants of God, God has a debt to release cancellation. Right. You don't even know nothing about it. Yeah. How many people are here, old people? Hmm. How many of y'all know that in Deuteronomy 15, 1 to 4, that there's a debt release that you can have faith for to, be, to believe God to release you from debt, and you never did it? <laughs> My people perish, why? <laughs> Deuteronomy do, do 15, 1 to 4 says what? That every seventh year there's a debt cancellation that of my people, so you don't have. See, debt keeps you poor. Debt owing people, see, the the one that that that, that bows is slave to the lender. That's right, that's right, that's scripture. That's right. When you bow, you become a slave. And that, that means you're working and they're garnishing your check. You're working, you do your little thing and they garnish your check and take your little check to get their money if you don't pay them. But God is saying here in Deuteronomy 15, 1 to 4, that I got a debt cancellation when you can believe God and stay in that word and you can see him wipe some debts for you. And some of you, are, you don't believe it because guess what? You're trying to figure out how God will do it. Like I said to the farmer, I know your business. <laughs> your job is to believe it and stay in that word. God's way of prospering his people is through who? Jesus and through the word. Amen. 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 Third John says what? I pray that thou mayest prosper, even what? And that soul prosper. What Psalm 35, 27 say, O.C.? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 35, verse 37. Mm -hmm. 27. Oh, 27, okay. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor thy righteous cause. Yea, let them say continue, that the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Go what? Go ahead, brother. He said, begin to shout, begin to praise God. Why? Because God does what? Has pleasure. Has pleasure in what? The prosperity of his servants. Servant. Glory! That's right. Yeah. Oh, you gotta know how to receive that word. God, God has pleasure. He has pleasure on you having. That's right. He, God is not happy when you don't have. God is not happy when you begging. God is not happy you don't know how to pay your rent or your mortgage. God has pleasure in the prosperity of your servant. God has pleasure on you having the most in your life. God has pleasure on you. And I know some of you probably didn't hear. But I'm saying to you, God has pleasure right. when you are blessed. Now let's go on a little bit. Now read.